Don't Learn to Declutter and Downsize with Jackie Valentino and Karen Buchanan. Hi, good morning, everybody. I am Jackie and Karen is here somewhere. She's probably not visible to you right now, but I am going to be doing all the talking today. Uh, welcome. We understand there's a lot of you visiting us from around the country and out of the country. So we're excited to have you all here this morning and um, hopefully we can uh, have some fun learning about decluttering and how to get rid of some things in our lives. So um, if we could advance the slide on to our next. so. A shameless plug, these are my kids, but one of the questions that we want to ask ourselves throughout this, and we're going to be trying to answer the who, what, when, where, why, and how questions, but the most important one that we really should be asking ourselves is who, who is going to do this for us? Karen and I have uh, been in this business for over eight years, and we deal with a lot of different people in a lot of different situations. Some people have those uh, kids, some people have friends, some people have no one to actually help them um, with this process. But so it's a question we should be asking ourselves, who is going to help us? So we can look at it two ways. Who's going to help us? Um, <laughs> who's going to help us during this process or who's going to do it on our behalf? So the slide that you're looking at right now is sort of speaks for itself. Um, I am going to show you and share with you a story, uh, one of my favorite personal stories about decluttering and having too much stuff. So I'm going to hold these things up because I can do this. Hopefully you can see it. I've got three little glasses here in my hands. They're like little cor liqueur kind of, uh, um, I'm sorry, did someone just, Okay, just want to make sure nobody said something. Um, so these little glasses, I was at my parents' house about 10 years ago, and I was looking through their bar in their house, and my dad and I were talking about these little glasses, and I, I loved them, and I asked him if I could have them. He's like, sure. So I carry these glasses. There's probably about 30 of them total back to Washington. They, my parents lived in Texas. And my oldest son, Andrew, who was in the last slide, was, came over to the house one day. And I was like, Andrew, look, aren't these the cutest little things? I thought they were just so wonderful, had to have them. And he looked at me with the most deadpan look on his face. And he said, that's just more junk we're going to have to get rid of. And he was right. So in relation to the slide you're looking at, no matter what we have, whether it be a garage or a storage unit full of stuff like that, or just some little shot glasses in a closet. If someone doesn't want them, they're kind of looking at it like it's a burden and it's something that they're going to have to deal with later on. So we want to make sure that we try and take care of as much of this as possible before someone else has to do it. So if we could have the next slide, please, Sue, that would be great. Okay, so one of the things that Sue asked me um, during this process of, of planning our, our presentation was the holidays are coming and how we can kind of take advantage. Hopefully some of us will have family and friends visiting, um, how we can take advantage of getting some help while they're here. Now we don't wanna burden them with too much because we do want them to come back next year instead of planning a trip to Hawaii or something. But um, here's some kind of maybe fun things we can do while we have family to try and start that process of soliciting some help. So one of the things we could do to make it fun is to look through pictures. Everybody likes to look through pictures and pictures is one of those areas that we have a tendency to accumulate a lot of. A lot of us are from that generation before cell phones and iPads and things we could take pictures of and we have albums full of stuff. And so a fun thing would be to, to gather everyone around and say Thanksgiving dinner is over. Let's look through some pictures, but give everybody a box and say, as we're going through the pictures, why don't you take the ones that you want? And then everybody can share and have fun and share stories about, uh, about some of the old times during these pictures. And then everybody gets to take a box home. You can assign everyone something to do while they're there, right? You can even have a little grab bag, pull out, pull out a ticket and see what's on there. Guess, guess what you're gonna be helping me with? But it would be really fun to have something small for everyone to do. Um, 
and it'll accumulate into a lot. So you say, okay, um, Joe, you're going to help me clean out the my junk drawer in the kitchen, and Mary, you're going to help me with the pantry. And you can get some stuff done while people are there and they can help. And it could be kind of fun as you're going through things. Again, going back to the pantry, pantries, medications, things like that have a tendency to get pushed aside or um, if medication changes, we still hang on to old ones. We forget to get rid of them. We buy new stuff uh, for the pantry, not really realizing we have expired stuff in there. So that's one of those areas that's really important that we can say, you know, it's, we need to take all that stuff out of there and take a look at it because it's really for our health and safety more than anything. Have your kids go through their old things. I know my kids still have some stuff at our house. My kids are in their 30s, but for some reason we still have caps and gowns hanging in closets upstairs and old yearbooks from school. And so far they haven't expressed a big interest in taking those things with them. And it is now the property of my husband and I. And uh, so if they are over at the house, you might want to send them up into their old room or out into the garage, wherever the boxes of stuff are and say, you might want to go through this stuff. And if they don't want it, there's no point in you hanging on to it either because they're probably not going to change their mind. And then do a donation drop off. So you can say, okay, it's Black Friday. Let's go take all the stuff that we've gone through and we're going to go do a donation drop off and go get some coffee or we're going to go shopping or not shopping. You don't want to go shopping. You don't want more stuff because you're getting rid of stuff, but, but uh, you can do it together. And those are kind of areas that people can help you with while they're there. I know a lot of times when we have family over for the holidays, we're looking for stuff to do kind of ways to fill time. And so there's a couple little things you can do here to, to have them, help as a group and you can make it fun because you can you can do it together so uh, sue if you can give us our next slide please so why is decluttering so hard this was actually a real client of ours this woman lived by herself in about a five bedroom house and this was kind of after a couple of hours of karen and i working over at the house we were had bags and bags of stuff that this woman had um, but it is hard, and that's why we're here today. So let's talk about why this is so hard. If we could have the next slide, please, Sue, that would be great. Okay, so here's some things um, that we have come across in our in our um, helping with people. So decision fatigue. Uh, I heard this term, and I thought, I can't whatever happened to just being tired? I don't want to do it, right? But no, it's decision fatigue because we are making decisions about a lot of stuff that's in our house. And it's very tiring. It really wears on you. It wears on you mentally. It just wears on you physically. And we it prevents us from starting. You don't know where to start. We have a tendency when we think about decluttering to think about everything that's in our house. Um, Maybe it's not everything, maybe it's just a couple of rooms, but it's a lot. And it's a big picture that we have a tendency to get overwhelmed with. I used to do personal training and I used to tell my clients, it's great that you have a goal to lose a certain amount of weight, but let's take it a little bit at a time. If you think about it in smaller chunks, a healthy breakfast, a walk in the morning, those are small goals that lead up to big results. And it's the same thing with not knowing where to start. Just start somewhere. And we're gonna elaborate a little bit more on that um, in upcoming slides. You're pretty much going through everything you own. Um, it's, it's There's a lot that we accumulate. And again, it's that overwhelming picture of, I need to take this down to a much smaller, much more doable size to make it work. It takes a lot of time in this one, as I was going through this presentation again, I, I really, I had to laugh about it because very recently, you might remember, we were all in quarantine. And I don't know about anybody else, but I was looking to fill 24 hours a day with stuff. And this was the perfect time for a lot of us. And a lot of us did, um, but if we all did it, we shouldn't even be having this presentation right now. So using, the idea that it takes a lot of time is true, 
but we had a lot of time and we just need to make the time. And that becomes an excuse for the other things on this list. It's physical work. One of the things that uh, we did a presentation a couple of months ago for Cadillac and they had surveys after the presentation. And one of the things that someone commented on was that I was assuming that they could physically do the work. And that was true. So that's why we go back to our who in that previous slide and say, who's gonna help us do this? Because sometimes we physically can't, sometimes we physically don't want to, but it's physical work is definitely a reason why we don't get started. It's emotional. This is probably the biggest one out of all of them. We all have sentimental things that we have. We all, you know, are coming to that realization that we've accumulated too much stuff. It's time to start getting rid of it. Our kids are telling us they don't want it. That's an emotional thing and it's a very real thing. We get sidetracked. I could say to myself this afternoon, I'm going to get started. I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going upstairs into my closet and I'm going to start getting rid of stuff. And I guarantee you, if a friend called me and said, you want to go for a glass of wine, I'd be out the door, right? So we get sidetracked with other things and we don't, we don't finish what we get started on. This is another one that I think is really important and it reminds me very much, it, it, it really touches home with me, um, is that it's a realization that we may be entering a different phase of our lives. So changing places was actually started because I had to do this with my parents. They were both living at the time and they couldn't stay in their house anymore. So it was a very much a realization that things were shifting. And about 10 years ago, probably around the same time that I got these little shot glasses, um, my sister and I were trying to talk my parents into downsizing and getting rid of some stuff. And I'll never forget my father saying, you don't understand. This house is my last hurrah. And what he meant by that was, is that to ask him to give that up and to start giving up stuff, you were asking him to give up the stuff that he had worked for his whole life. And it was a terrible realization looking back. I'm not sure we realized it so much at the time that that's what he was really saying. So all of these things on this list are very real. They're kind of negative. And so we're gonna try and turn this around to be a positive thing to show you some ways how to, to get started on this process. So if we could have the next slide, please. Okay, and so why is it important? Why can't we just leave all this stuff in our house and say, I'm gonna go get that glass of wine with Jackie and her friend, right? So it's for your health. Um, Karen and I, again, we go into a lot of homes and when they do have clutter, um, or even if they don't, um, they're not cleaned necessarily properly, especially if we have too much stuff. Let's face it, if we have a bookshelf that has books and knickknacks and picture frames and all that kind of stuff, we don't take that stuff off of there and clean it properly on a regular basis, more than likely. So health reasons for your safety, things get piled onto things, uh, clothes are draped over chairs, things are stacked too high, it's not safe. It goes back to the pantry thing too. If you have expired foods, if you have expired medications, it's not safe. So it is important to declutter. My favorite on the list is it's instant gratification. And I don't know anyone who doesn't like instant gratification. As soon as you start this process, you're going to see results. You're going to feel better. It's going to be a little bit of a weight lifted off your shoulder. It's instant. And we don't get that in a lot of areas of our lives. So this is a really good reason to start that. And then of course it goes back to the who that our loved ones don't have to do it. So um, if I could have the next slide, please, Sue. Okay, so this was actually a client that Karen and I had. It was a 94 year old gentleman who was living in a studio apartment in an assisted living. And the company called us and said, we're going to have to evict him if he doesn't clean this up because we can't get the medical services, the EMTs in there if, if he gets sick. Now, looking back, we couldn't really figure out how he even got into the apartment because this is pretty much what it looked like all the way through. But you can see in this picture that he couldn't use the bathroom. 
I mean, the shower was full, the bathroom was full. You literally could not walk in there. And so when you do have too much stuff, it doesn't mean you're a hoarder. It just means you have too much stuff and, you know, hopefully your house doesn't look like this. Um, you can't properly use the space in your home. In some incidences, we have stuff stacked on bathroom counters. We use our kitchen tables as workspaces. We're not using them for their intended purpose. Sleep space, there might be clothes draped over the end of the bed. There might be, you know, chairs that have stuff on them. So when we have too much stuff, we have a tendency to improperly store it or use it. And our functionality of our everyday living can be compromised. May I have the next slide, please? So some quick and easy things to start with. We're jumping around just a little bit, but these are, you don't even have to get out of the chair to do these. Um, cancel any unnecessary subscriptions that you have, whether it be the paper, magazines, anything that's coming in that has a tendency to just clutter up, take up space. I'm gonna stack over here so I can read it later. Cancel any of those. Switch to electronic bill paying. Again, we see this a lot where people are receiving the actual bill in the mail and because it's not being addressed in the proper workspace, it's it's on the kitchen table or it's, you know, over here on my desk. There's, there's no organization to it. Things have a tendency to maybe get unpaid or get lost and then you have to store all those bills somewhere. So try if you can to switch to electronic bill paying. Before you go out and buy new stuff, Take inventory of what you have. It's really hard to make an informed decision about what you need when you don't know what you have. A good example of this is paper products. We, we work with a lot of people who have stuff stored in all different areas of their house. I've got paper towels in the garage, I've got some in the kitchen, I've got some. So you're only looking probably in one place when you think you're running low. So take inventory. We do that when we go grocery shopping usually, and it should carry on to other areas of your house. Do I really need new towels? Do I really need new linens? Those kind of things before you go out and buy new stuff. And then think about doing a co-op. And if you don't know what a co-op is, it's basically just sharing uh, purchases. So Costco is a great example of that. Everything, I was just there yesterday. Uh, I, you have to buy everything in bulk there. Some of us live in smaller places that we don't have the room to store the stuff, which could potentially become a problem. Um, but it's kind of nice to do a co-op because maybe you go every other month to the store and whoever you're doing the co-op goes the alternate month. So it saves you some trip to the store. It saves you uh, having to store stuff in places. You can do it with food. You can do it with other things um, that you're consuming. So some quick and easy things to think about. And if I can have the next slide, please. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. Rule number one before, before after, okay, rule number two, after you're thinking about who's going to do this, rule number two, never start with sentimental things. Okay, we all have them. We are all very reluctant to get rid of them. So don't start there. And the reason you don't start there is because you're not going to move past that, right? All of a sudden, everything in your house is going to become sentimental. I can't get rid of my mother's china, so now I can't get rid of some clothes that I, you know, <laughs> and it just carries on. So don't start with sentimental things, okay? But what you do want to do is to start small, okay? And this goes back to what I said earlier. The reason why one of, one of the reasons why this is so hard is because we're thinking too big. Okay, so start with an area that is small. It could be as small as a drawer. It could be a bookshelf. It could be a linen closet. Small to me might be different than what's small to you, and that's okay. Start small. Pick an area that you see all of the time. We always need positive reinforcement no matter what we're doing, and it keeps us motivated. So if you start with a guest room closet that you don't see all the time. Not that that's a bad thing, but you're not gonna see it. You're not gonna see the fruits of your labor. It's not gonna make the things around it look more cluttered, right? We wanna take something that is that we see all that a small area that we see all the time because we want that positive reinforcement. 
we want to start with a functional area to regain functional living. And that goes back to what I said earlier about kitchen tables. We see this a lot. People have just stuff all over the kitchen table and they just kind of push it aside. And I've got this one little area that I have my plate and that's where I can eat every day. Chairs, there's stuff that's draped over chairs and stacked over chairs. That stuff needs to be organized and put away, gotten rid of whatever, however you wanna say it, to regain its functional living. Bathroom counters are another one. They're cluttered a lot with, with lotions and soaps and hair dryers and all kinds of different stuff. I get it that it's easy access, but it's hard to, to keep that area functional if it's too crowded. This is another really important feature. Finish what you start before moving on to another area. And that's why we try and keep it small because it's easy to finish that up. If we say, I'm going to start with my garage, right? We all know that that's not going to, you're not going to finish that before moving on to somewhere else. It's too big. We need to work our way up to that. So we start small and you're small and my small. It's whatever small, there's no wrong answer to that. Whatever small makes the most sense. Pick an area you see all the time. Start with a functional area to regain functional living and always finish what you start. Have your house ready for unexpected company. This is, this is my big thing. I always say you can show up at my house anytime and I wouldn't be embarrassed, you know, as long as you don't go into certain rooms, right? But at least have one room, a, a greeting room that people can come into. A lot of times when we go to people's house, they're apologizing while we're still on the phone with them making the appointment. It's like, well, I'm not the best housekeeper and I hope you can, you know, just ignore the, you know, whatever it is. And then we go to the house, they know we're coming and they're, they're cleaning off furniture and moving papers around and different stuff to accommodate us. So these are the kind of things that we should, we shouldn't have to apologize our way through the house when we have company. So Anyway, remember though, don't start with sentimental things because you won't move on from that. So if I can have the next slide, please. Okay, so now that you've picked your small space and I'm gonna use a bookshelf because that's that's easy for me to, to relate to on this one. So what you don't wanna do is sort as you're taking things out. You wanna take everything out of your space, whatever you start with, take everything out. Then you clean it, just wipe it down. And now you're going to sort as you're putting stuff back. And here's why. I'm going to give you an example of a lady that I worked with. Um, she had me come out to her house. Her closet was very cluttered. She had multiple things hanging on one hanger and it was stuff on the floor and different stuff. So I said to her, I said, I'm going to stand in the closet and I'm going to hand you everything. And I want you to put it in three different piles. Don't worry about what we're going to do with it. Just put it in three piles. So she had to decide what these clothes meant to her. One of the piles was clothes that fit and that she wears all the time. That's one pile. The second pile was clothes that fit, but she doesn't wear all the time. And the third pile was clothes that just don't fit. And so while she was looking through that, I, I said to her, I said, now that everything's out of the closet, why are you keeping the clothes that don't fit? Now, I, I can't see you all, but I know some of you are going to smile when I say this. She said, back in the 90s when I was working, I was about 30 pounds lighter. And my goal is to get back into those clothes. And I said to her, I said, I hope, I hope you do. I hope you meet that goal. I really do. But do you really want to wear clothes that are 30 years old and outdated? You don't. You want to go shopping. So let's take those clothes and we're going to put them in bags and get rid of them. So while she was doing that, I went in and vacuumed. I did the cleaning in the closet. I wiped down all the shelves. It was a brand new closet by the time we got done. It was a completely clean slate. And that's where we wanna start. So get everything out, give it a good clean. And now we're gonna worry about what we're gonna put back because you're not gonna wanna clutter that space back up again. 
it looks good. It's brand new. It's like when you move into a new house, right? It's like, I don't want to just throw stuff up on the walls and clutter it all up. I want it kind of neat for a while. And so that's the way it is when you're doing this. Okay, so you sort as you're putting back. Okay, you're making that decision. Is it worth keeping and putting back on this nice new shelf or in this nice new closet, whatever area that you're working on? Okay, we can have the next slide, please. Okay, so as you're sorting, putting things back, have some bags or some bins or something ready to put the stuff in that you're not putting back. I have another prop. This is my this is my latest going to the going to the donation center. I've got scarves in here. I've got some clothes. I've got a purse, that kind of thing. And so once you have those full, you've got the stuff back on the shelf or in the closet that you want. And you have the stuff over here that you don't want to keep either go throw it in the trash or go put it in your car so that next time you go to the donation center it's there you don't want to hang on to those so that you're looking at them and here's why i am famous for going through my closet seasonally probably what did i wear what didn't i wear kind of thing and i'll take out what i don't want and i'll put it in bags and i'll leave it there because i'm thinking well Maybe tomorrow I'll go back, make another pass through, and um, you know there may be a few more things that I want to get rid of. But instead of going back through my closet, I go back through the bags. And now I'm taking stuff out and I'm putting it back, right? Why am I getting rid of that? I love that. Why am I, well, I shouldn't be getting rid of that kind of thing. So you want it out, out of sight, out of mind. It's a commitment. I'm, I said I was gonna get rid of it. It needs to go. OK, and that's what I did with the lady with the closet. It's like now that we've bagged all this stuff up, we're going to take it right out to your car. I, we both carried it out there. You, you couldn't even see out the windows in her car. She had so many bags and she took it right away and got rid of it. So don't don't leave yourself with that temptation to put stuff back. OK, all right. Next slide, please. OK, so some suggested areas are bookshelves linen closets, kitchen counters, office desks, any table with stuff stored on it, coffee tables, end tables, let it bring back its functionality like we talked about. But these are really good, good areas to start. Like I said, it could be something as small as a drawer. As long as it's progress, it's all progress. As soon as you start, it's that instant gratification. You know, if you do a drawer this week, a closet next week, you know, work at your own pace. And that's something that you should never feel pressure to do because that really takes, that's a very negative thing. So we don't want that. You work at your own pace and your pace and my pace are gonna be different and that's perfectly okay. So if we could have the next slide, please. Holiday decorations, now that we're coming up to the holidays, this is a good time to talk about this. They come out once a year, right? So they don't need to be in your master bedroom closet, right? They don't need to be somewhere where you have to access them all the time. So put your stuff in containers that are labeled. So you know, you know, if you have, you know, fall decorations, Easter, Christmas, whatever they are, you know you're going to the right decorations. Personally, what I do is I right now my my fall decoration box is on top and I've got Christmas decorations underneath after Thanksgiving that all gets switched around. Right? So have them labeled. They should everything should be stored in one place. Karen, I, I can't see her right now, but I know she's probably smiling when I talk about this one house that we did. This lady had a lot of decorations wreaths were everywhere all over the house in different closets. And they actually had a room that they had kind of a supposedly a designated area for Christmas decorations, but they were all over the house. So what we did is we got the wreaths and we hung them on hangers and hung them in this closet really nice and neat. And it just looked so nice in there that everything was just all in one spot. So they could, you know, they can say, do I really need 10 wreaths? Maybe they didn't realize they even had that many. So we want to make sure that your holiday decorations get stored in one space. And this is important too. If you 
put up your Christmas decorations this year and you have some left over, why aren't they being put up? Maybe those are the kind of things that need to go in a bag and in your car right away. If you don't put them up this year, you're probably not interested in keeping them. So there's no point in putting them back in the storage bin and putting them away until next year. I did that last year. I thought I needed a new tree, but it ended up being, I just really wanted new decorations. So I got rid of the old ones and I replaced them with new ones. And that just seemed to work. But if you don't use them, go ahead and um, out the door, they should go. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so what do you do with all of this stuff? Now that we're kind of talking about, okay, Jackie, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorting and I, I don't know what to do. Here is what we're gonna, and I use the acronym SENIOR because we deal with senior clients a lot, but the first thing, like I said, is to sort. That's what you have to do. You have to know what you have before you can make an informed decision about what to do with it. So here's a couple of things that you can do. You can earn money on stuff by having a sale. You can have a garage sale. There's eBay. We have a, the wonderful capacity of the internet, which brings us all together today. This is, I, I, we talked about this at our last presentation and I really liked this idea. And if you have someone in your family or a neighbor or someone that you know, a young person maybe that is computer savvy, looking to make a little money, maybe a little entrepreneurial, have them help you out with this and say, hey, if you can put some stuff on eBay for you, I'll give you a percentage of whatever it is you can sell. Uh, it's a great opportunity for, for someone to help you out in that capacity. So you can earn money on it. There's consignment shops that you can bring your stuff to that they will try and sell for you. So earning is a possibility, especially if you think you have something that that might be worth selling. Again, the, the beauty of the internet now is that we can look up ourselves and see what something might be worth. We may find out something's worth more and we might find out something's worth less, but this is a good opportunity to have someone help you with that. The new is to donate it and make it new to someone else. Um, our economy, I know some of you are not here in the US right now, our economy is not that great right now and prices are very high on some stuff and not everybody can spend extra money on certain items. So if you are not using something and can donate it to um, one of the um, donation sites around, I'm sorry, I had a loss for words there for a minute, um, it could be new to someone else at a discounted price. We have a lot of um, in this area that we live in, and I'm sure a lot of you do in other areas, uh, a lot of donation places. Some of them are, for instance, here we have a veteran store, which all the proceeds help veterans in our area. Seattle Children's Hospital has a store here. Hospice has a store here. It's a wonderful way to get back to your community without really having to do a whole lot. It's just parting ways with some things that you have. So. Let it be new to someone else if it's something that you're not using. Inherit. This is my favorite one of all. Um, if you have, if you are hanging on to something that you want someone in your family to inherit, why not give it to them now? There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that you make sure it goes to the right person, because a lot of times if we don't make our intentions known, what we want to happen to something, it'll either go to the wrong person or it'll just go away. Like I said earlier, a lot of times our kids are going, I don't want this stuff, I really don't. But maybe they don't really understand what it meant to you or what it should mean, what it should mean to them. So tell them the story. Say, hey, I have my grandmother's china. We had you know, wonderful family dinners on this. It's been tradition that we did this, this, and this. And just share it and give it some value if they don't feel it has value now. So inheriting is, is a big one in that if they tell you they don't want it, I, you know, I wanna leave this to you. If they really don't want it, don't force it on it. We have to understand that if somebody tells us they don't want something of ours, we need to really believe them. So with the inheriting part, I think it would be a wonderful, it's a beautiful gift to give to someone yourself, as opposed to finding out that someone left it to you and it has no meaning. So if you can part with something, it's a, it's a great thing to do right now and, um, and it gets it out of your house. <laughs> and so omit is obviously to throw things away. That's 
pretty simple and to retain. We're obviously not going to get rid of everything. So there's things that we can keep, which are probably going to be some of the sentimental things that we talked about earlier. So earning money on stuff, donating it, passing it on to someone that you wanted to have it, throwing it out and retaining it is what's what really should be happening with everything in your house. All right. So ask yourself, why are you here to when should you begin doing this? And believe it or not, by being here today, you've started the process. You're there, you're on your way. Uh, it's never too early to start it. We have people like my parents who we had tried, like I said, to, to get them to start going through their things years before it actually had to happen. And unfortunately, they both ended up in a rehab and were told they couldn't go home. So now they couldn't help. And I know it was weighed very heavily on their minds that my sister and I were having to jump in and take care of all this when they really should have been doing it themselves years ago when they had the capacity to do it. It's always better to do this when you have a say in what happens. You know, we talk to clients, we, Karen and I move clients too, and sometimes the decisions being made for the person, and that's, that's not as ideal a situation as if the person had been making that decision themselves. So it's really no different with decluttering. Um, everything in your house is yours. It's, I look around these, these are my possessions. Oh, it's not somebody else's responsibility. So it's very important to just take that time, get started, start with your small area and just put one foot in front of the other and just keep going. So next slide, please. So again, we're going back to who, um, who is going to do this? You know, my husband, poor thing. I've, um, you know, he has to live with me who does this all the time. And I'm constantly, we need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of this. And, you know, now I'm just a nag, <laughs> but he is starting to get rid of things because he's realizing, you know, our kids have lives. They're in their thirties. They're, they're, they, they have their own things. And so we need to understand that um, it doesn't get easier as you get older physically or mentally necessarily. So who is your who? Who's gonna help you or who's gonna do it for you? And it's important to think about this um, and, and to really take those people into consideration. And believe it or not, there really are people out there that are probably willing to help with this as long as you keep it small and you don't burden them with a lot. It's important to keep that in mind. Just little bits go a long way. So next slide, please. So gift ideas, we're gonna go back to the Christmas thing. Now the holidays are coming and we're all saying to ourselves, what are we gonna get somebody for Christmas? Or what do I want for Christmas, right? And you know, we tell our kids all the time, we don't need anything. Please don't get us anything. You know, we can't stress it enough but we still get presents for Christmas. And not that we don't appreciate it, we do, we, we very much do. But an alternative to that, because it's still the gift of giving, is the gift of services. Um, there's a lot of people, you know, we, we hear this around the holidays a lot. A lot of people are, need food, people are shut-ins, they need, you know, different things, you know, help with different things along the way and it really is kind of no different if we have enough stuff and we and we don't need a gift if you will a tangible gift so some ideas for gift giving or gift receiving is a cleaning service you know say to your grandmother or your neighbor or whoever it is hey you know we're just gonna have we're gonna hire someone to come in and help you out for a month or two and kind of get you know a good a good clean done or you can say it for yourself too i would really like someone to come in and go top to bottom in my house a few hours with an organizer right we're talking about decluttering hey you know what we've hired changing places or we've hired someone else to come in and help you for a few hours or a few days or whatever duration you choose and we're gonna, they're gonna help you start this decluttering process. Hire a gardener for somebody in the spring, say for a couple of months, we're gonna have somebody come and just get your yard cleaned up for you. Make a coupon book to redeem for chores. 
which is always a good one. It could be grocery shopping. It could be cleaning. It could be organizing, help with organizing. Coupon books have been around for a long time. It's not a new idea, but it's it can be refreshed with some uh, new needs we have as we get older or we have clutter and things like that um, that we need to take care of. Set up for meal deliveries. Again, COVID has really um, brought that about. You know, people have grocery pickups, they've got meal deliveries, all kinds of stuff. It's a great gift. The gift of services is a really good alternative if for someone who just really does not need more stuff. I know when Karen and I um, do presentations and we have giveaways, it's always something edible <laughs> because we don't need more stuff, right? We, we have to practice what we preach. So think about that um, if someone asks you what you want for Christmas or if you're looking for ideas to give to somebody else, the gift of services is a really good really good alternative. Next slide, please. So just to kind of a quick summary of this, um, and before I get into this, um, I, I really, you probably already figured out that I've had an old, my own personal experience with all of this with, with my parents, and they have passed away, both of them. And I, I, my, my father, my father passed away first, and by that point, they were already out of their house. And at his funeral, my sister said to me, can you imagine if we had to get mom out of that house right now and go through all of this stuff? Um, we never know when that time is going to come for us. And I'm not meaning to drag this down because we're trying to keep this more lighthearted, but it's very true. We never know when that time is going to come that all of a sudden we can't do this anymore for ourselves and, and, and our life circumstances have changed. So ridding ourselves of some of that unnecessary stuff is important to do. Um, it's a mental thing. It's, it's, it's a consideration for those around us and it's never too early to start. So in summary of what we have just been talking about, again, we always want to start small and, and there's no wrong. The, the only wrong answer to this is trying to start too big. So start small again with a drawer, a cupboard in your kitchen. It could be a closet. It, it could just be some photos, that kind of thing. Just start small. Don't feel like you have to be rushed. Again, sometimes when we meet with clients, they'll say to us, you know, my kids are coming in to help, but they can only be here for the weekend and we've got to get this done. And we've got, and there's this, this pressure and there's this, this defeat kind of aura that goes on with people that they just say, you know, this is my time and, and I'm being pressured because once stuff is gone, it's gone. So it's okay to take your time with this and let it be your time. It's your stuff. Let it be your time. Going back, pick an area that you see all the time. It's so important to have that positive reinforcement. It's kind of like getting on the scale and losing five pounds and you go, oh, this is great. You know, looking in the mirror and seeing that your pants feel a little bit better. Pick an area that you see all the time. Positive reinforcement is really important in this. Clean before you put things away because you're going to be starting with a clean surface a clean closet, a clean bookshelf, whatever it is, sort on the way back in. Just take it all out and sort on the way back in. Another story, and this is going to go back to that decision fatigue we talked about earlier. About 10 years ago, my father fell and broke his hip. So fortunately in their house, they had two master bedrooms. So we were able to move everything downstairs, move their bedroom downstairs. It had a big closet down there, which had been used for a just kind of a catch all sort of a closet, but that had to be cleaned out because now we had to bring their clothes down. So I knew physically they weren't able to stand there and help me. So I said, go sit in the family room and I'm going to take everything out of the closet and I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to clean the closet and then we're going to start going through all this stuff. Well, we had this big, huge heap on the floor, <laughs> on the floor in their family room of just stuff. And by the time I finished cleaning the closet, I went back in and my parents were both, they couldn't even believe what they were looking at. They didn't even want to start. But I thought, let's go one thing at a time and just tell me if you want to keep it or you want me to put it away. 
And within a few minutes, they were both had a severe case of decision fatigue because they were overwhelmed and they physically couldn't do it. And so a lot of these things fell into place. And what I didn't realize and I learned that I could carry into this profession was I was wearing them out. And that was kind of a good thing because they didn't care anymore what happened to the sub, right? The first five minutes, you can tell, you can tell what was what we were talking about in the first five minutes. And then after that, it's just get rid of it. I don't care anymore. Right. So I was kind of wearing them down, which was kind of a genius move on my part. But anyway, um, all kidding aside, they were suffering from decision fatigue because it was just overwhelming. So don't pick an area that's too big, but you always want to make sure that before you put it back, clean it, because now we're starting with a clean slate and we want to just organize it and make it look nice. And you can't do that with clutter. Commit to the process, finish what you start always. Um, you don't want all these loose ends out there because it, it doesn't go anywhere. We know that from other areas of our life. So finish what you start before you move on. Work at a pace that's comfortable for you. It doesn't all have to be done this week. Rome was not built in a day. We're all familiar with that expression. There's, there's, there's no wrong way how to do that part of it. Just work at your pace. Work at what's going to keep you motivated. Okay. So if it's, if it's a drawer this week and a closet next week, and just that's fine. That's perfectly fine. One of the things I don't, we're going to start here with the sentimental items. Um, don't start with sentimental items. Um, the the problem with sentimental items is that we do this to ourselves. I don't know anyone who has ever been told in their life, and maybe they're out there, I don't know, but no one ever said to me, if you get rid of this, I'm going to come back and haunt you, right? We kind of have a tendency to do that to ourselves. So another story about that is that um, I had two blankets, one of them my great-grandmother made and one of them my great-aunt made. My mother hung on to those things because those two women were very dear to her and she they meant a lot to her. When we cleaned out their house, I took the blankets home and they sat in my closet for three or four years until COVID hit. And I started taking some stuff out and I took the blankets out of the closet. They were starting to get musty smelling. They had a couple of holes in them and I thought I can't even donate them. And I was certainly not going to use them. So the way that I dealt with this, it may sound a little bit silly, but I, I sat on the couch with the blankets and I said a prayer to my mother. And I said, I hope you'll forgive me, but these blankets were going to stop in my generation anyway, because my kids didn't want them. So it's up to me now what happens to them. And I thought I would much rather myself make that decision of getting rid of them than to have my kids just throw them in a bag and say, this is just junk. At least to me, I knew one of the women who made them. and I knew how important they were to my mom. So I was able to get rid of it. But I did that to myself as far as thinking I needed to keep it. And we have a tendency to do that with sentimental things. We put that burden on ourselves to say, I just, I just can't get rid of it. I can't get rid of it. But my kids don't want it. So it does stop with us. And so make that decision, what you want to do with it. And, and, and it can be done. It really can. If you want someone to inherit something, give it to them now. If you're not using it, it's, again, make that story, make that memory for that person, give that item some value. And again, if they just tell you they don't want it, don't take offense to it. Don't be hurt by it. They just... They just don't understand why it is that that's an important item. So maybe it can go to someone else or just donate it and let it be new to someone else to enjoy. Start the process now. When we log off of here, hopefully you can look around your house and say, I'm going to pick that small area. Maybe that's your assignment. Maybe I can give you that as an assignment. Pick that small area, get started, and just don't make it a bad thing. It's actually a good thing that you're doing this. It really is a good thing. And so just commit to something that you can finish and that it'll motivate you to keep going. So if you could advance us on to the next slide, please. 
So here we are, we're coming to the end of the presentation. I hope some of you have some questions. I know Megan said at the beginning, um, if you have some types them in and hopefully we can answer them for you. So Megan, I'm gonna ask or Sue, who's, who's, um, who's gonna be doing the question. Do we have any questions? We had one question early um, before it even started. If you were gonna cover those items in your house that have emotional attachments okay. and you know that you'll be using that item later, at least sometimes. And mm -hmm. then we could also, I could unshare the slides now so that people could come off um, or could come back on camera. Mm -hmm. um, just, and then you would, I'll spotlight you so that you're a little bigger. Okay. Okay, I think you, the slides shouldn't be showing up anymore. Okay. And if anybody wants to ask a question now, you can come off mic and do so. Or type in the chat. So while, while we're waiting for that, I'm just going to address, if I could, that the question about the sentimental things, if you, if you know you're going to use it later, that shouldn't be anywhere on your list to get rid of. If you think you're going to need it later, I'm not advocating getting rid of everything. Um, there are certain sentimental things that we have to understand that the people that had those things before us don't live in those things. I can honestly tell you when I look at this little glass that I showed you earlier, I don't think of my parents at all when I look at them. I think of them when I'm driving down the road or when I'm looking at my kids or there, there's just different times. These are these are just things and some are harder to get rid of than others. Um, so don't start there. Don't start with those things if, if it's going to be if you're questioning it that much. Um, so hopefully that uh, that answers that question. Hey, we do have a couple hands up. So Pam, I think you popped in with the first hand up. Do you have a question? Well, I just have a, actually a comment because um, my mom has passed and um, she had her china and nobody wanted it. And so I had my brother send it up to me here in Washington and um, it's in my garage right now. But I, my plan is to take the china and, you know, chip it up and make um, stones for the garden and you know give this to my brothers or sisters if they want to reuse it in my own yard but kind of repurposing that um and i i just think and it's a fun project to do with my grandkids so anyway that was my repurposing thing yeah that's a wonderful comment thank you so much pam that that's a great idea um we have people that do that we karen and i we do estate sales as well and we had a lady that came in and she buys um tea cut excuse me teacups and saucers and makes night lights out of them, which was just the cutest idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can repurpose stuff, and it's a wonderful way then to share that one set of china with a lot of people. So thank you, Pam. That's a great idea. Repurposing yeah. is great. Uh, JB also has their hand up. And then there's a couple questions in the chat now, too. Um, I watched your other presentation. I'm slowly on my way. Today we we're taking the toys I saved for my grandchildren um, to a charity. And then somebody said, thanks for your response. And then somebody asked, so much of my stuff is paper. Any suggestions? So it depends on where you are. Um, like for instance, here we have uh, Columbia Industries that does, uh, not Columbia Industries. Oh. The ice shred. See, I shred. I'm sorry. And they have shred days. So you could just take it over and they'll take it right out of your car and shred it for you. So check your local area to see about that. Um, I know lots of people have shredders, but if you have that much paperwork, it's probably better to take it somewhere else. It doesn't really cost that much. I think they weigh it for you. But um, but that's that's a good idea. Now, if you switch to electronic paying, like I said earlier, you won't have that paperwork. But but it's baby steps, right? So, but check with your local area as far as um, if they have like shredding days or something that you can you can take this stuff over. Right, and then there's a comment. Uh, I've been moving annually, renting, and I try not to unpack much each time. But we have boxes and clutter galore. I'd like to go through everything and repack before our next move. <laughs> the screen keeps moving, um, but I also don't want to unpack it all. Any words of advice? Well, um, the fact that you've moved and you have not. I, as a matter of fact, I knew a guy um, that had moved several times too, and he said 
by the second move, if we didn't unpack certain boxes, they didn't even open them. This was really gutsy. They didn't even open them. They just threw them out. <laughs> and I thought, okay, that's a little bit. So, you know, if the boxes are labeled, well, you should know what's in there. If not, um, it's worth just popping it open and saying, okay, let's just kind of see what it, sometimes you may have to go through it just to see what's in there. Um, and, and quite honestly, if you keep moving, you're paying for that to be moved every time. So it's worth taking the time to just open it up. To me, it's, it's like, and if anybody here owns a storage unit, I'm gonna put this disclaimer, I apologize in advance. Um, when I hear storage units, I just, I cringe because they're like a black hole for a lot of people. Not everybody. They, they definitely have their purpose, but we deal with, you know, people in their 80s that are going to get a storage unit to put stuff in. And it's like, why? Why are you doing that? And so things like boxes that you're moving around a lot, um, if they're just not being opened and stuff. I think it's worth opening it to say, you know, if we haven't opened it, we may not need it. So I would suggest doing that before your next move, open them up. See so what's in there. Yeah, back to the shred question. Um, sorting is the problem. Okay. That's okay. the part they're struggling with. Okay, so sorting. I'm, I'm sorting, sorting the paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I think the um, for a lot of things like certainly taxes and stuff like that, I believe it's seven years you have to hang on to stuff. Um, if you have stuff, we have run, we almost kind of have like a running contest between Karen and I of what's the oldest paperwork we found somewhere. Um, and we've we've seen stuff, you know, from from 30, 40, 50 years ago um, that people have kept. So just again, uh, take take a section, take take a drawer full of paperwork or just take a stack and just start making different, but these are bills, these are old bills, these are, this is older than seven years. This is, you just have to, again, start small, just grab a little stack, grab a couple of files out of the drawer, wherever um, this stuff is kept and just make little piles and say, I need this, I don't need this, I'm gonna get rid of this. Um, and then you just you just have to keep doing that and kind of go through it. Um, paperwork's just it just accumulates so quickly, and there's so many different categories of what it is that we have. So you should be able to just take it by small stacks and 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 sort through it that way. Don't try and do it all at once. Hazel put a great point or a thing in the chat. It's a great point about a sentimental attachment. It's hard when considering what to start with. You are so right. Don't start with the sentimental sentimental items first. I also have a friend who has mobility issues who needs to have surgery again soon. She could really take advantage of this seminar. I know she would be worried about getting around and going through things, but you offered guidance on that. So that's, um, there's always a way. Thank you for thinking of those living with mobility issues. I know she'd appreciate that. So thank you. Oh. And then JB, who had his hand up earlier, left the message in the, the chat saying, I have heavy items that need to be removed from the second floor. Do you know a, a way to get them to a local charity? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, again, depending on where you live, um, some of the people will come and pick it up for you. Um, now, if you're just needing it moved within your house, um, there might be some, um, you know, a moving company or something you can call, but a lot of donation companies will come and take it. Um, with COVID, unfortunately, at least here locally, because Karen and I use a lot of these services, they're shorthanded. Um, they, they have, you know, gas money. I mean, some of them are not picking up anymore, but I would check with your local, some of your local charities, because they should be able to come in and get the stuff from you out of your house. If not, you may have to just, you know, hire a few people to come and just take it out. But try try with um, donation places first, and they, they might, if you let them know in advance, then they can bring the proper crew out to come and, and take it. And um, many times there's no charge to do that. Great. And then Lori asks if you're from the Tri Cities and if you do this yeah. as a business to help seniors. Yes, we do, Lori. Um, we are here in the Tri Cities, and like I said, we are in our ninth year. We started out primarily with uh, transitioning seniors, so when they don't stay in their house um, or you know they can't stay in their house, we get them packed up. We do work with the moving companies to actually physically move the stuff, but then we set up the new apartment or new house, whatever li living quarters they're going to. 
and uh, and then we can do estate sales. So that has actually become quite a big part of our business, the estate sale part of it. So yes, it's much as much or as little of that service as you need. You don't have to commit to the whole thing. So yes, yes, we do. And then Lori goes on to say that she's in her 60s and her kids are in their 30s. I feel like they really don't want our stuff in caps. Um, you were right. They want you to unclutter because they don't want to be the one to be a burden to them or have it as a burden to them. Mm -hmm. And and that's very true. Um, you know, they all have people have lives. I mean, that's let's let's just be honest. Um, I think people in the next generation, my kids in that generation, they seem to be busier a um, lot more going on in their lives. Maybe both people are working if they're married. Um, if people are waiting a little bit later to have children um, than, than sometimes in our generation. So, so yeah, it is. A lot of people don't live close to each other. Uh, th there's just a lot of reasons. And yeah, it's like I said, when they tell you they don't want the stuff, believe them. So don't hang on to it. Don't hang on to it thinking someone's going to change their mind. <laughs> um, Andrew still doesn't want these little glasses. I'm going to keep going back to these things because I love my little glasses. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I leave those to him just, just for spite. No, I'm teasing. But um, but yeah, it's 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 so important to do this. It really is. And that's why we just start small. Just start small. Make any progress is better than nothing. And so let's not burden ourselves with this giant uh, commitment that we have to make. A little bit at a time, just a little bit at a time. Lori, you're still young in your 60s, so um, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully after today, we're all a little bit more motivated, and we can think of a few things in our house. Even by the end of the day today, if we all just got a brown paper bag and filled it up with some stuff, we made some progress. We're, we have one brown paper bag less of stuff than we had when we woke up this morning. So it's all progress. It's all progress, and we should all feel good about that. By the way. Thank you. Uh, Hazel wanted to thank you for the reminder on the seven years for keeping paper. And Judy says she's been rereading letters from her son from 1985 and then tossing them. Very good. And you know what? With with digital photography, we can take pictures of all this stuff now, too, which is something that we may not, you know, years ago, if we took a picture of it, now we've got the picture <laughs> that we have to deal with. Where now we don't, we can just store it in a file on a zip drive or something and keep those things. So I've done that with some pictures, too. You know, you can scan stuff now. It's just, it's it, with the electronic option that we have, it's, it's, it's a different different world that we live in and much better opportunities. So great idea to to read them and just um, and they, they stay here, which is the most important thing. And then um, one person says, I must stop watching Re Antique Roadshow because everything looks valuable and it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you said that my, the best part of that show is the end of that show when everybody's, you know, the, the, the walk of shame when everybody's walking off with their $3 item. And that's so true. I keep telling Karen, I said, we, we, need, we need to not watch that show because we sell stuff at estate sales and think, oh my gosh, we could have sold a Picasso and didn't know it. So, but yeah, but it is like I was saying earlier, um, you know, if, if you could have someone maybe help you if you don't know how to do it, she's really, Karen was just showing this to me the other day. When, when we have estate sales, we'll take a picture of something if we're not sure of the value just through Google and it'll, it'll bring up the same item or very similar items and give you some kind of an idea of value on it. It's very easy to do. Um, so it's a way how to find out it's a very quick answer to find out a lot of times what things are worth. And then Hazel says, so, okay, um, so scan old photos to a drive or something. Mm -hmm. What do I do with the old albums? I have tons of old photos from college and high school theater. I know. And if you're like me, Hazel, you kind I kind of like album. I kind of like looking through them. Um, so I've got a bunch of them. I don't always practice what I preach, but you know, that's the, that's the time when you say to your kids, do you want any of these pictures? You know, and they may want them electronically. Um, you know, you really hate to make that pitch, but like I said, with a lot of our stuff, and this this is something that that I was actually thinking about when I was kind of going over this presentation in my mind, that a lot of our stuff stops with us. We're it. So, you know, like I said earlier, it's like I was either going to throw those two blankets away. And taking a moment to just reflect upon how important they were to my mother or my kids were just going to do it and it was just like in haste. So 
if you know, start with some of the pictures. There may be some you're going, I don't even know who these people are. My mother was famous for that. She had photo albums and I'd be looking through. I'm like, who are all these kids? She's like, I, I don't know, their Christmas picture somebody sent me. We can certainly get rid of those or consolidate them, maybe even just consolidating. Um, but it is hard to to take that album, go throw it out. I, I would agree with that. But um, if you have them digitally, you can take you could be on vacation and be looking at them so you can take them with you anywhere you want to go. Um, Carolyn says, thank you so much for the very helpful information. And James and Michelle say, where do you store kitchen gadgets that you only use once a year, like the turkey baster when you have a small kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're like me, my husband put, takes the turkey baster and changes the oil in the car with it. And I did not know that until Thanksgiving Day one year. <laughs> so one of my kids was down at Safeway buying a new one. Um, so, so stuff like that could actually, if it's something you use during the holidays, can go with your holiday decorations when you store it in there. You know you're going to need it. So so. It it comes out once a year when those decorations come out. Um, if it is something you only use once a year, um, a turkey baster doesn't take up much room, but um, how do I say this? I don't have, I personally do not have things like Christmas dishes. I think they're beautiful. I don't have them because I'm only gonna use them once a year. <laughs> so stuff, I mean, do you really need it? Or do you need it, you know, could, is it something that you could be using more often? Um, consolidate those things and maybe keep it with your holiday decorations. Keep it for when, the, with the stuff that you use at that same time of year. And that is it in the chat so far. Well, I certainly appreciate all the questions and comments and, um, you know, I'm happy to, to answer anything else if anybody has anything. Um, I think this has been great. Thank you. Very okay, informational. Well, um, Pam has well, her Pam has her hand raised. Do you want to come off mic, Pam, and ask a question? Um, I'm sorry. And the name of your business again is what? It's called Changing Places LLC. And if if our website is Changing Places W A for Washington. So changing places, wa.com. And that mm -hmm. gives you a bunch of information on the services that we provide. And um, like I said, the, the service was the business. Karen and I have known each other for 20 years. We used to work together in the real estate industry. And um, in 2014, when my parents were told that they couldn't go back to their house, um, my sister called and said, I think you need to get down here. They were in Houston. Mm -hmm. And um, that whole experience of having to not only clean out their house, find them a place to live, they had nowhere to go, get them moved, you know, decide what they had to take with them, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, came back to the Tri-Cities and I said, I think there's a need for this here. I really do. And mm -hmm. our services, there's places all over the country, probably all over the world that do this, but um, but there was nowhere in the Tri-Cities doing it. And mm -hmm. I, I got with Karen and... Um, because I know her work ethic and I know we we have the same compassion and understanding for for seniors and mm -hmm. she said I think it's a great idea let's do it and we just did it I mean we, we didn't even it just came to be and um and it's been great we have a very supportive community here of, of, in the senior industry uh, people like like Cadillac who who are are you have such a wonderful educational program that uh, we're so proud and, and thankful to be part of. And um, it, we love what we do. We really do because there's such a need for it. And um, knowledge is power. It's great you're all here today. And, and we really hope, our hope for you is that you got something out of this. And uh, our information is on that website. Please feel free to contact us if you have any further questions or, or need some help. Um, we'll, we'll be happy to, uh, to, to do so. So do you like come out for an evaluation? Um, so, so we do. So our, our initial uh, consultation is complimentary. We have to see what's there. Um, you know, people will describe to us over the phone what their situation is and, and we get there and it, it's it's not quite, or they think their house is just so horribly cluttered and it's, it's really not. So we have to see what's there and um, it gives us an opportunity to, to understand the situation, um, to, to understand the personalities of our clients. They can get to know us. Um, 
It is just Karen and I, um, as far as the changing places part of it. Like I said, if someone is going to be moving, we do work with movers and we have a great relationship with the moving companies. We have a wonderful relationship with the retirement communities in our area because that's where a lot of business comes from for us because mm -hmm. they are already dealing with people who are needing to move. And so we, we try to be a resource for them that they can say, hey, we've got these two ladies here who can help you. And, and um, mm. we just love what we do. Yeah, well, you do a wonderful job. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Lori says, thank you so much for the wonderful information. I might go to my mom's and get those two Afghans so she can stop asking me who would like to have them. Do you <laughs> want them? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Um, no, but say a little <laughs> prayer before you get rid of them. <laughs> that's my that's my advice. That's my advice. And Heather wants to know how we'll re-watch this recording later. Um, it'll take me a little bit to trim the recording, and then I'll put it up on our YouTube channel. Um, tomorrow or later today, I'll send a copy of the slide so people will have your contact information as well um, to everybody that attended today. And then there's another one in here. Um, and I think I answered that question for you, Heather. So Hazel said she just found you on social media. What a blessing I think this is. And um, Ms. Pardini said excellent advice this morning. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much. And like I said, this is the first step. Uh, we wish you a lot of luck because this is, this, it's not an easy thing to do. If it was, we wouldn't all be here, but um, our wish for you is, is safe, healthy, happy holidays ahead. And um, again, if we can be of any help to you, even if it's just through a phone call or an email, we'll be very happy to do so. Um, that's what we're here for.